Okay, so um, to recapulate, um, we now have the hypervisor set up with um, two main interfaces, so ENO1 and ENO2. On there we configured two bridges called VM bridge 0 and VM bridge 1. We then set up PFSense 1 and a PFSense 2. Each of them have a VTNet 0 which uses the VM bridge 0 for the public traffic with a public IP address. Then what we didn't set up yet are the secondary and the uh, third interface. And for that I will be picking a 10.0.255.0 uh, slash 16 range. So basically a 16 range would be from here to here. So we would have a lot of IP addresses we can use in, in that range. Um, I've configured that to use the VLAN 100. And then we also have the EMO1, which is a another small network, different than that network. Um, this is just so the two PF sensors can communicate to one another over a so-called sync interface. And that is what we are going to do now. So let's go back into the primary one. I go to the interfaces, to the LAN, and now I'm going to um, set up that interface. So I want to disable IP version 6, and I want to set my 10.0 range on a slash 16 network. Now tells me that the DHCP 6 server is active on the interface and cannot be used. So we go to services, DHP6 server and disable that. Then back to the LAN interface, disable tracking and set our proper range, slash 16 and save. And we can apply the changes. And then I'm going to do the same on the secondary server. So first I'm going to disable IP version 6 server, then hop to the LAN interface, disable IP version 6 and set a slightly different IP. So this one will be ending with a 3 and on the first one we have it ending with a 4. I also need to specify the right subnet mask and click save. So now we basically configured these and these. And now all that's left to be done is to set up the third interface. And we are, this is basically our CARP interface, but it's rather a sync interface than an actual CARP interface. So we are going to set a static IP and we are going to pick just a random subnet here and this one will be a 24 range. So basically that would be this range. And click save and apply changes. And then we go here, enable interface, sync, static IP and here we are going to pick the counterpart number two also on a 24 network and click save and apply the changes. Now we got a message that our DHCP pool is invalid so the normal IP version 4, uh, IP version 4 doesn't match our ranges so to fix that, I am just now going to simply disable the DHCP server here and do the same in the secondary. OK, 
Okay, if I go back to the virtual machine, I should now be able to. So this is the gateway that is running on this virtual machine and I can also ping the gateway on the other virtual machine. And then I will also want to test the connectivity of the sync interfaces by pinging these two. And here we have our first little problem. We cannot ping it. If we go to the other one, we also don't get a ping response. So to do something about that, we go to firewalls, to rules, and we go to the sync interface. And we are going to create a pass for any traffic that comes from the 172.16.30.0 slash 24 network. So now that we've set it on the first one, pings from the second to the first one should start working. The other way around is still not working, so we also need to go to the uh, secondary interface and create a sync firewall exception here too. And there we go. Now both of them are able to ping one another. Then what we can start doing next is to enable our high availability synchronization. That basically means whenever we do one of uh, these changes, so if we change users, firewall rules, anything, not configuration, um, the primary will send the settings to the secondary. So to get that going, we check this and we use a sync interface. That is also why we call it sync interface. Then we need to enter the IP address of the counterpart. We enter the username admin and then the password. And that is also why I specified the same password on both systems because eventually they will have the same users and that way it will be much easier to just have the same passwords. I don't even know if it works any other way. I've never tried it. Then I will select all the options and that should be it. Now settings should start to synchronize, but first we are going to read these messages. Do the same over here. And now we can use the DHCP server to test if our configuration is working. So if I now go to the DHCP server, you can see the range is still the wrong on the secondary and on the primary. And now we are going to change the range from this to this. So now it should be in the right um, network. And once we change those here, we should now be able to simply reload the page. And now the changes have been applied to the secondary system. So now it's much easier to configure it. So now we only have to configure it on uh, the primary and all the changes will be replicated to the secondary. Now the next step would be to create a virtual IP address. So basically a IP address that both the systems can share and all the um, other virtual machines like this virtual machine then use that virtual IP address as a gateway and, and as a DNS server. And the two CARP systems then will talk to one another and know which is the primary and that one will handle the traffic. 
Okay, so for that, we set a virtual IP. We are going to select the CARP interface and we want to set this virtual IP on the LAN interface. And this is my shared IP address. Also of a slash 16 network uh, subnet mask. That one has to match the LAN interface for it to work. Then we also need to specify a password and a VHD group. So if you create multiple virtual IPs, you can do that too. Then each of the virtual IPs have to have a different VHD group. Then on each side, um, a you have a base and a SKU, and these two values define whether or not this is the primary or the failover. So if we are going to save it over here and apply the changes, then we can go to the secondary and go to virtual IPs and see that we have the same settings here. What you will notice though, that here we have a base of one and a SKU of 100. Here we have a base of one and a SKU of 100. So basically the one that has the lower SKU is the primary and they exchange it by talking to one another through this sync interface. So if I now log into my other system, my test system, you can see that I already got a IP with a default gateway of using the primary, which currently has no network connectivity yet. But I can now ping the 250 IP. And that is basically a shared IP among the two systems. So the next step would be to go to the network address translation, go to outbound. And there we are going to specify manual outbound and create a new rule. And on the one interface from the source network 10.0.0.0 slash 16, we are going to use the interface address Hmm, that should have worked. Oh, yeah. I need to specify manual outbound and apply the changes. And there we go. Now we have a network connectivity. So if we are going to run a IP route now, you can see we are still using the primary as a default gateway. So now I am going to the DHCP server settings. And if I scroll down here, I first can specify to use the virtual IP as a DNS server and as a gateway. So let's do that. And we still have the old one. So we are going to do a if down Oh, let's just use it like this. Disconnect and reconnect. And now we have a route pointing at our new virtual IP. And we can use it. So what's interesting is that if we run a trace route or a MTR,
then you can see it's going through pfSense local domain. Um, let me first sh change those to gateway. And also set a primary DNS server. Okay, and let's run it one more time. Now with the proper host names, it should be easier to understand. So while we are going through a route of the virtual IP by going over this 250.0, we still use the primary PFSense as a gateway. So if we were to um, want to use the secondary, we can go to stock status and to carp. And we can simply click here and enter persistent carp mode. Then if we take a look back at our virtual IPs, you will notice, hold on, let's first see if that actually worked. So now this is uh, a backup and the secondary should have taken over the master ability. And if we are going to restart our MTR, you can now see the traffic is heading towards the secondary interface. This does not only happen when you do it like this, it also works automatically. So let's click um, to leave the maintenance mode. Basically, we now reverted the traffic to go through the master and the secondary now turned back into backup mode. And if we restart the trace route, it's going back through the primary gateway. So let's say um, we have an outage and this virtual machine just dies. And if we go back to the tester, you can now see a small pack loss, but now the pack loss is already going down. If we now restart our track, trace, you can see it automatically switched over to using the backup route because the primary is, of course, offline. Then if we are going to start up the secondary, it will basically boot up, come back online, and we can redirect the traffic back to using the primary. Okay, so the primary PSNs has finished starting uh, booting. And now you can see the traffic is going back through the primary gateway, which is actually pretty nice. Okay, I hope this helped somebody getting their stuff up and running better. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.